everyone, and welcome to Getting Into Vault Part 7. Um, yeah, we've, we've gone through six parts uh, since uh, since this started a couple months ago. Um, and today we are on probably, I would say, the most requested topic that was in the chat. I don't know if you agree or disagree, Melissa, uh, since you've been on the past streams. Yes. Definitely the most requested. Yes. 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 Uh, it is Kubernetes because... You know, everybody wants to know what's what do you how do you do vault with Kubernetes, um, and uh, as as at least as of the this episode, um, KubeCon is KubeCon EU is coming up. So um, if you are interested in learning more about it, we will have some HashiCorp folks there. Um, so do reach out to them with any questions that you have as well. Uh, if you watch this episode and you decide you have more questions. Um, for those who have not joined before, welcome. Uh, this is Getting Into Vault. This is us trying to do learn Vault the hard way. Um, Melissa is usually our driver on the stream while I am the passenger and backseat driver, I guess the backseat passenger that's helping drive. Uh, yeah, I'll be the back. I'll call it the backseat driver um, who's helping Melissa learn it. Um, and uh, we want you to learn with us. So please interact in the chat as you do. Keep in mind that uh, be welcoming, be respectful, be professional. And we have community guidelines posting a link up on the screen for that. And so we want you to comment. We want you to provide feedback. We want to hear your questions uh, and request the uh, request the topic for the next one, because we do actually look at the comments. Um, as another note, uh, if you are on LinkedIn, hello, uh, we uh, cannot necessarily respond directly on LinkedIn through the platform we're using. So if you post something in LinkedIn, we may or may not be able to see it. Um, sometimes there's a bit of an async issue between the two. So um, we will get to it after the stream. So do comment. We And if you don't see us responding to it live, we tend to go back to it after the stream. And we'll look at that. With that, we're going to change up today's stream a little bit. Um, you'll notice there's someone named Michael here. <laughs> uh, Michael, would you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Koser. I am the newest uh, developer advocate here on the community team at HashiCorp. Welcome. So today, because we're talking about Kubernetes, we need we needed someone with a little more Kubernetes knowledge. Um, and, and Michael has Kubernetes knowledge and knows Vault. So we're just uh, we're gonna we're we're gonna it's it's let maybe most maybe I will do less backseat driving today. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, but Melissa's just gonna hang out and watch. Um, she will be back for the rest of it. But this requires a little bit more specialized Kubernetes knowledge. Um, and we needed someone who knew a little bit more about Kubernetes. Uh, if you aren't familiar with it, we're not familiar with Kubernetes and you're watching, um, we're not going to go through the basics of Kubernetes. Um, I don't think we have the time to do it. Uh, we are just going to talk about Vault in the context of Kubernetes and, and deploy a few things. Um, so definitely check out the um, definitely check out the basics of Kubernetes. There are plenty of materials on that. With that, Melissa, thank you for popping on. Say hello to everybody. Um, and we're just going to get started with step one. <laughs> okay, Michael, have you been tuning into the previous streams? I know you yeah. may or may, you may or may not have been. So yes, I was on the last stream. I watched that. Um, I believe that one was about um, was that one about um, leases? I believe. Yeah, that's right. Database Secrets Engine. So in part six, we talked about the Database Secrets Engine. We talked about dynamic secrets in Vault, the leasing system, um, how to understand leases, how to renew them, revoke them. And today we're going to be taking some of what we learned from last week um, and showing it in the in Kubernetes. So the, the situation we've set up for today is that imagine you have uh, a secret in Vault and you now need to get it into Kubernetes, right? Um, sounds very simple, but Michael, I guess, People have asked this a lot in the chat. Why do why do this? Why get a secret from Vault and put it in Kubernetes? Why not just use Kubernetes secrets or why use any other uh, you know configuration manager and just dump it into Kubernetes that way? Right. Yeah. So um, in my opinion, you know um, the Kubernetes secret engine is is great for your your static secrets. Um, 
but they are, are all stored in within Kubernetes. Um, Vault is great because it centralizes the secrets from you know, many different platforms into Vault. Um, so if you're running in AWS, um, Azure, GCP, and Kubernetes, you can put all of those secrets in Vault um, and then pull them where you need them. So you're not kind of bouncing around different systems. Um, additionally, I like Vaults in Kubernetes because then you can really get into uh, dynamic short-lived credentials. Um, so a lot of your Kubernetes secrets are kind of static, long-lived um, and manual rotation process. But I think what we're going to see here um, today is maybe some more short-lived dynamic uh, credentials. Yeah. Um, and it's also worth saying, I, I mean, I'm looking at the question, the questions that we got in chat. So I just want to make sure that um, we cover some of those. But, um, you know, what about Vault in particular makes it good for Kubernetes, right? Um, and this is what we're going to show today. There are a number of built in, a number of integrations that you can add onto your Kubernetes cluster that allow you to retrieve the secret from Vault. Um, and there's also a deep integration with Kubernetes identity. So uh, service accounts um, have a deep integration with Vault, which means that uh, what we saw last week was that we were able to, uh, well, we used a token to access the secret, but the week before that, we used AWS auth methods um, to automatically authenticate to Vault, get a token, and then get the secret. Um, and all of this is built into uh, the integration that Vault has with Kubernetes. So it makes it a lot easier to deploy, makes it very well automated. Um, I mean, I guess we could talk about scale, but I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's a that's a later problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think that there are a lot of uh, technical pieces um, and a lot of automation workflows related to getting something from an external API somewhere and putting it in Kubernetes. Uh, and Vault already has a lot of this built in. So um, you're going to see the synthesis in the chat. You'll see the synthesis of Vault agent, auth methods, um, and the database secrets engine today which hopefully it will work. We didn't plan any of this because this is a, <laughs> this is a stream where we make mistakes. Ooh. Okay. I, yeah, you're going, <laughs> it's not so great. Um, okay. So let's get started then. Let's, uh, I'm sorry. I'm double checking the questions. Ah, there is a question. Um, what is the benefit of using vault over native Kubernetes secret management? I think we kind of answered this. Um, but if you haven't checked out your Kubernetes secrets, they are base 64 encoded. That is not, encryption. That's not secret. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you might consider something that's a little more um, dynamic and, and as a better way to secure those secrets. Um, but, you know, there's there are many other, other options out there that doesn't necessarily require a secrets manager. Some folks do some kind of encryption um, in Kubernetes secrets as well. So there are options for you out there, but Vault, having it centralized in a secrets manager means that you can audit how it's being accessed, revoke it, you can control the life cycle of that secret. OK, now, finally, let's get started. <laughs> Took a lot in the intro. Um, Michael is going to share a screen. We are, oh, I got that. Let me add that. OK, we are going to do everything on Michael's machine. Um, previously, on other streams, we were doing everything on, on Melissa's machine, proxy through Boundary. This time, we're not doing that. Everything is live. There is a Kubernetes cluster. Um, there is a database. There, there are a number of things that are live, but we're able to connect to it from Michael's machine uh, just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, and we don't have to hop through a bunch of different dependencies right now. So Michael, the first thing um, I guess we, we should get started is how do you do, how do you get your Kubernetes cluster hooked up to Vault? Yeah. Um, so in my experience, I've used, um, there's a Helm chart um, to deploy the Vault agent injector um, into um, into a Kubernetes cluster. Is yep. that is that the right answer? That is, that is. See, you know all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know all this stuff. Um, I'm gonna put a link to the Vault Helm chart um, just so folks are are uh, aware of what, the, what it is, or not Vault, okay, sorry. Vault Helm chart, that's not the wrong, that's not the right link. Let me grab that. That is the, oops, oh, uh, oh, there we go. Hold on, the vault helm chart. Okay, here we go. Did that not send? There we go. Okay. All right, so vault helm chart, here we are. Um, this is the vault helm chart. This is how you're going to deploy vault to Kubernetes. Um, 
Michael and I did chat about this, and it's worth pointing out that um, we're going to make an a very conscious architectural decision today. Um, we have deployed Vault servers in EC2 instances. We will be using those Vault servers. Um, so we will be configuring the Helm chart with an external Vault address. There is a way for you to configure the Helm chart to deploy Vault servers um, onto your Kubernetes cluster. But uh, Michael, you mentioned in your experience, not many people do that. And I guess the, the question is why? Why not deploy your Vault servers onto your Kubernetes cluster? Yeah, um, and it kind of goes back to just um, Vault is a, a security product that stores very sensitive data um, for your environment, secrets. Um, and so you really want to put it on something that has very minimal dependencies and binaries and other things running on it. Um, you can run Vault, um, the Vault server on Kubernetes, but you would want a completely separate, um, dedicated Kubernetes cluster uh, for that. Um, if, if you're running workloads, uh, application workloads, uh, typically um, you wouldn't want to put Vault there. Uh, so in this case, we are running an external Vault cluster and then connecting uh, Kubernetes to that. Yeah. And if you look at um, a lot of the other topologies for Kubernetes clusters, and you, you could have say that Vault should go in, if you are planning to deploy Vault servers on Kubernetes, because you do want to approach the management of Vault with a Kubernetes lifecycle, you do want to break it out into a shared services cluster. Um, and then what we're going to show today is what you do to connect every other Kubernetes cluster to that shared services cluster. So um, we're almost going to show the, the most common uh, approach to connecting uh, a Kubernetes cluster to Vault. We're not going to show the deployment of Vault servers onto Kubernetes. There's, I think there's some, there's a lot in the chart itself that handles it. So I think going through that today um, may not be as helpful. So with that in mind, I guess we should probably just install the Helm chart. <laughs> Um, okay, Michael is connected to a Kubernetes cluster. I don't know if, if you could run kubectl uh, and just show folks that you are connected to a Kubernetes cluster. Should I just do a yeah. get nodes? Yeah, yeah, get nodes. All right. Yeah. Get nodes. Um, this is running on EKS. So we have three nodes um, and we're going to basically deploy uh, the vault components onto it. It won't be the vault server. It will be um, a couple other, we'll look at it in more detail. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is uh, add the Helm chart repository for HashiCorp. So Helm repo add HashiCorp. Uh, HTTPS and then helm.releases.hashicorp.com. Yep. Okay. So what this will do is uh, connect up to the official Helm chart uh, that we've released through HashiCorp. Um, anytime you have Helm charts, including console, including Terraform Cloud Operator, um, you'll be watching, you'll be um, pointing to this uh, release URL. And then we're going to do, uh, before we install Vault, because we, there are some values that we have to configure, um, Michael, we should probably configure some values.yaml, <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> so um, I'm going to actually send a, I don't know if you can pull this up on your screen somewhere, but the values, for Helm chart. I didn't prepare this, so it might be easier just to pull the values from uh, from this in your browser somewhere. OK, and put them into VS Code here. Yeah, yeah. We'll probably, yeah, if you could create a new file like values.yaml, and then we'll just update that there. Um, if you're not familiar with Helm, you can override default values for that Helm chart. Um, there are some that are already available set for you, but we need to disable a number of them because we're not planning to deploy certain things. So Michael's just going to copy the values YAML and we'll ensure that we have that. Otherwise, I will have to find the uh, other version of this as well. Let me double check. Hmm. All right, so there are a lot of values in here and we're not going to get too complicated with all of this. Um, again, a number of these settings are for um, deploying the vault server on top of the uh, on top of Kubernetes. Um, we're not going to enable that. Um, so one of the first things that we're going to look for um, is that we are going to look for uh, global. So global is always is pretty standard across all of the HashiCorp Helm charts that you're going to see. Um, global means that it's disable everything, enable everything or disable everything. 
Um, and by default, it is enabled true. I think we're going to do false because we don't want to deploy every component like the servers. Um, and the namespace uh, will do vault because um, there was a bit of a question on whether or not we should just deploy everything to default namespace. But the reality is if you're in Kubernetes, you're deploying uh, individual services into separate namespaces. So we're going to put vault in its own namespace. That is perfectly fine. The, the TLS disable, uh, we might leave that for now. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then the external vault address, this is the important one. If you are connecting to an external vault server, set of vault servers, this is the one that you're going to be using. So we are going to pass in the external uh, vault address there. I have to, where did I put that? Oh. <laughs> it's anything in notes.txt. Or no, 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 it's not notes.txt. If you echo vault uh, ADDR in your command line, I think you'll probably yeah, get the same that. thing. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yep. So um, this is a load balancer to the vault server. We're going to pop that in there. Uh, OK, that's probably all we really need to touch in this um other than oh injector we need to look for the injector um we'll start with that first so yeah enabled uh, we have to set that to true um so the injector is what michael mentioned before this is how you are going to allow an application to access vault and get the secret um this is what they call the inject the vault agent injector uh, where it will quite literally inject a container running Vault Agent as a sidecar to your application. Um, it is using uh, the Kubernetes, a Kubernetes webhook, mutating webhook, um, to inject the an init container and then subsequently a sidecar container for Vault Agent. Uh, so remember, we learned about Vault Agent a couple parts ago, a couple episodes ago. Um, and Vault Agent can dynamically uh, will will go retrieve the secret from Vault and put it in a file somewhere or inject it into environment variables. Um, this is the agent injector that will be uh, will be enabling, um, and it will run alongside the application. Um, there, this is not the only way to do it. By the way, I do want to preface this: there are three ways to do to actually get a secret from Vault into Kubernetes, and there's three sets of integrations. I think we're going to do two. Uh, I don't think we're going to do the third one because I think that it may or may not be as interesting to folks. Um, but if you do want to see the third ver the third one, which is the secret store driver, do let me know. We can we can do that. But um, we're only going to be showing agent, uh, probably agent and um, vault secrets operator today. So just as a note, this is the place we're going to start with. OK, I think this is all we need. I hope, I hope. Oh, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, this is all we need. Everything else has been disabled. Um, uh, and so we are going to take this values file and I guess we can uh, do a Helm install. All right, I guess Helm install, what is that? Helm install, uh, vault, install vault, HashiCorp slash vault. Um, and then I guess we may have to create the namespace. I think there was a dash dash create namespace or something as well, right? Because I don't think we'll automatically do it. Yeah, dash dash create namespace. OK, like I think so. If not, then, you know, we'll try we'll try another command. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember, do we need to pass in our values file here? Oh, or yes, we do. We... Yes, dash okay. F, I think it's dash F. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, dash F. Mm -hmm. And then I guess we built in the namespace. If you could do dash N space vault, just to make sure that we didn't like, just in case, because I don't think vault, Helm will put, well, Helm necessarily picks it up. OK, so let's try creating this. And it will take time. Um, it doesn't take too much time um, as deploying servers. So if we do kubectl get pods space dash N vault, Yep. So if we check the vault namespace, you'll notice there's the vault agent injector. Um, yeah, there we are. This is a controller that basically monitors any um, any deployments that have the vault uh, agent annotation on it. And if it detects the agent annotation, then it will inject 
a, an init container and the sidecar container for vault agent. So um, those are some important fun facts that we must know. Okay, so we have an injector running. Uh, I guess this was faster than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be more complicated. Uh, anyone in chat have any questions on the values file? We can go through it a little bit more if, if there's any anything specific. But um, overall, this is pretty much the only component that gets deployed uh, when you turn off the vault servers. Uh, if you're just setting an external vault address, all it's going to do is deploy the agent injector. You could also say that you don't want the agent injector deployed if you're doing other, uh, if you're doing something else, right? Um, but this is just one of the easier ways to do it. Okay, so now uh, we're going to get to the the next part, which is we have an application and we need to get some database credentials for it. So um, the first thing is that we already have a sample application deployed. Um, Michael, if you could show the sample application, just do a get pods on the sample app namespace. Um, I deployed the sample application. Um, it is It is running. Uh, <laughs> it has two API endpoints. Uh, one is for to show the credentials. We're not going to print them out right now because it's using the root database credentials. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then it's also going to show products as well. So uh, it's a, a list of products. The application goes to a PostgreSQL database and reads a table and then outputs the information. Nothing, nothing, um, nothing in terms of complexity, but the, com the, uh, the, workflow we're going to show today is how do you get the secret from Vault, the database credential from Vault, and get it into uh, Kubernetes, uh, the Kubernetes application. Um, so if we check out Vault, uh, if you do Vault secrets list, um, I've enabled the database secrets engine already. Uh, if you do Vault read database slash config slash test, there we are. Um, you notice that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff already pre-configured, um, and so I've already uh, done the connection details. I've already set up the plugin, um, and so this is going to basically uh, be there for us to use. Um, the important thing to know is that this is all coming from the database secrets engine, uh, the database secrets engine we set up before. So if Michael does vault read database slash cred slash sample dash app, um, which is the role slash sample dash app, sample yeah, app. sample dash app. Um, this will give us database credentials. Um, our role is sample dash app. Uh, in terms of, I guess there's a debate. Do you name the role after your application? Do you name your role after the namespace? I mean, it kind of just depends. Whatever it, need, it means to keep track of which applications need to be reading from, uh, need, need those database credentials. Um, I would say you probably want to name it after your uh, deployment, at least, um, if that's what you want to lock the role to a deployment and then to the credential. Um, but if you want to be more broad, you can just have a broader um, role that's named after your Kubernetes namespace, for example, right? Um, but this is something you have to decide yourself. Okay, so this is already set up, but I think there are a couple things that are not set up. So Michael, we do not have Kubernetes auth method set up because an application needs to authenticate to use its Kubernetes identity on authenticated vault. We don't have that set up. Um, so I do a vault so, auth list. Yeah, to check, yeah check out. there we go. There we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we only have the token right now. Yeah. Um, so we are going to set up the Kubernetes auth method. Uh, and let's hope this works. Um, so the Kubernetes auth method uses the service account jot um, in, in Kubernetes to identify a workload and determine if it has access to Vault. So we do have to set up the Kubernetes auth method to allow our sample applications service account to access uh, Vault. Um, I don't know if there's a way that you can show the service accounts for the sample app. I guess kubectl gets service accounts sample app, dash n sample app or something. Service account or yeah, yeah or dash n sample. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I guess it's SA or no yeah. space. I don't know. We'll just do the that the, the short. Would be the short shorthand. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so there is a sample app service account. The service account for some reason doesn't have secrets, which is very uh I thought I created a token for it. Hmm. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I think I created a service account token. Maybe it didn't get created. Uh, 
since uh, I don't even remember the Kubernetes version, but since uh, I don't quite remember the Kubernetes version, um, you have to have you have to create your own service account token. Um, oh no, it exists. Okay, it does exist. Never mind. We're good. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so we have a service account, and what we're going to do now is set up the Kubernetes auth method in Vault. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, write the. All right, we're going to enable the Kubernetes auth method using Vault auth enable Kubernetes. There we go. Okay, we have enabled the Kubernetes auth method. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, set up the um, what is called the token reviewer jot. Uh, when you deploy Vault, uh, there should also be a service account associated with Vault as well. So, Michael, if you could go to the Vault namespace and just check that there's a service account called Vault. Yeah. So, well, there's Vault agent injector. Um, we may have to create one, but we could probably use Vault Agent Injector. Have you used Vault Agent Injector for this, or do you usually create a separate one? Um, I think I've used, oh, I'm trying to remember now. Um, I think I've used the Vault Agent Injector. Yeah, okay. We'll use this service account and see how it goes. Um, I think it has a service account token too, right? Like double check uh, kubectl get secrets dash n vault. Let's just double check there's a service account token associated with it because it does need service account tokens. Um, okay, it does not. Okay. Does the Helm chart have a value for this? <laughs> Hold on. Um, the reason why this is important is that the service account that gets created, the service account that we're going to link up to the Kubernetes auth method does require. Um, it, it does require uh, additional access. It needs a cluster role in order to do token review. So we need to actually set that up um, because I am concerned that we didn't actually set that up. So let's do that. Uh, service account used to run vault service account. These options are to validate the Kubernetes token. Um, we should have created that. So create secret true. Okay. There is a service account value that I think we need to add. So let's do that. But I don't know where it is in the values file. So if you go to the values file, let's just find service account. Yeah, service account. I think it's all one word. Yeah, there we go. Well, maybe not that one. There's 15 occurrences. OK, so service account. I see this. Now, where is it nested oh, under? Create secret here. True, yeah. But it's also interesting because it says that it should be created in the name of the service account, but it's blank. Its name is generated using full name template. So, all right. So we do need to do true. Oh, yeah. Kubernetes now recommends uh, short-lived tokens from token request APIs or projected use value. So. Yeah, I think you could do it this way. Um, we're going to just create the secret. OK. So turn this to true? True, yep. OK. And then I wonder if this is not getting created somewhere, if maybe we've disabled this, the service account create true, because I didn't see a service account get created. Hmm. Let's see. Where is this nested under? Not raft. Yeah. Let's see. Not nested under HA, right? So it's probably nested top level, it seems. Yeah. Of, let's see. Sorry for the scrolling. No. All good. Server. Server. Mm. Hmm. Well, then, that's not helpful. Let's double injector service account. We don't need the injector service account. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, let me double check if maybe we need to enable something else. But I think that is all that should be enabled. Uh, okay. All right. 
So let's see. Maybe we can deploy. Uh, we'll we'll upgrade. Do do Helm uh, uh, upgrade, and then the same command again, and we'll see if maybe it does create it this time. But it seems like it's not getting created somewhere. You said Helm upgrade. Yeah, vault. Um, and then dash f values dot. And then uh, dash n vault. I don't know if we need to specify the Helm chart name, but that, we'll see. It should automatically. Oh, yeah, the chart. HashiCorp slash vault. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Do a cube CTL. Yeah, cube CTL. Get uh, service accounts again. Mm, fascinating. Okay. I wonder, let's see, external vault address. So I wonder if maybe we reset global back to true because there may be some logic, underlying logic here that external service, uh, the external vault address overrides everything. So if we set that back to true um, and then let's redeploy, I think this might actually be the combination that works. Um, I can't say that there's uh, there's the, the logic underneath uh, the, the way it's parsing these values. Um, it could be that anything, anytime you pass in an external address, it's just going to override everything and not deploy the servers anyway. So we'll try this. Okay. At least my current reference Helm values does not actually override global. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it could very well be that it's not actually a problem. Okay. We're on the third revision of this. So let's see. Aha, okay. There we go. Yes. So if you do pass an external vault address, if you do um, get pods on the vault namespace, let's just see if they deployed servers too. It shouldn't have deployed servers. Yeah, so it didn't. Um, so if you do external vault address, it uh, just keep global as it is. It will automatically override the server definition. So you don't have to do anything. But um, you do need that vault um you do need that vault uh, service account, um, and you do need a token associated with that service account, um, whether it be through the temporary token um, that is suggested in the vault uh, in the vault values that are um, that there's a link there to it. Uh, in the, in our case, if you do kubectl get secrets and vault, we're going to use the service account token. So that you'll see this service account token vault token right here. So that's the one we're going to be using. Um, OK, so back to Kubernetes auth method. Um, we are going to do a vault write auth slash config, uh, so auth slash Kubernetes slash config, slash Kubernetes slash config, um, token underscore reviewer underscore jot. Um, and we are going to need that vault token. <laughs> So how you can parse it out, there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, you could just get the values out of it, and then um, we could do some very fancy scripting to get that jot. Um, so if you do equals dollar sign, oh, man, this is, I don't even remember Kubernetes querying yeah. right now. Um, OK, let's think it's kubectl get secrets dash n vault vault dash token. Do you have JQ installed? I do, yes. OK. Um, uh, dash. I should. <laughs> uh, let me just do the JSON query, I think. Yeah, does anybody remember this off the top of their head? I don't even remember. There's a JSON path support, so you can just make it easier. But um, OK, dash O equals JSON path equals uh, single quotes. JSON. You you know what? We'll just do JSON. You know what? I just I don't I JSON. I hope jQuery is installed. Uh, JQ is installed. Um, <laughs> let me double check. Hold on. I just want to make sure I'm getting this correctly. Um, and then we're gonna be sixty four. 
Okay. Yeah. So if you do JQ, uh, sorry, yeah, JSON and then pipe, JQ space dash R space dot data dot token, uh, pipe base 64 space dash D. Okay. So then don't hit enter yet. And then uh, we're going to do space Kubernetes underscore host. Uh, I have to get the cluster info for this for one second. Um, ew, I don't know how to send this to you. I think you're going to have to copy paste it from Kubernetes somewhere. <laughs> Is there a way you can copy and save this? Save yeah, this, this command for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Copy that. Yeah. And then if you do, actually, we yeah, cluster info. You have to do kubectl cluster info. Okay. Um, and so then grab that. Exit out of this command. Yeah. Here. Exit out of this command. Kubectl cluster dash info will give you the. Yeah. That. This top one here. Yeah. Yep. Uh, maybe set it as an environment variable. That might be the best thing to do. So if you do cube cube underscore host equals that, and then we don't have to pass in this mess of stuff. Um, and we can do the same with the jot. You can do export cube jot, and then do that command that that giant parsing. Yes, thank you, chat, for the help on the command. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. Oh no. no. See, it's a good thing we ran it. It's a good thing we ran it. Um, hold on. There's a way to do it by JSON path. So you could do it. Um I thought yeah. I had JQ installed. That's... It's okay. We're we're not gonna go through that. Okay, if you go uh if you go back to the command, um we'll do by JSON path. So if you go back up to the command, you take out the JQ portion um and then take out the pipe before the JQ. Uh, and you do JSON path um, so, instead of JSON, uh, sorry, dash O equals JSON path. JSON path, well, like one word there? Yeah, JSON path and then equals with no space. Yep, equals. And then single quote, um, curly bracket, squiggles, <laughs> as I say, <laughs> uh, dot data dot token. Uh, and let's hope that works. And then if we echo the cube jot, let's just double check that this is actually correct. Yeah. All right. Woo. There we go. Okay. Yay. We did it. Um, and then there's one, maybe I think one more environment variable we should probably set. Um, and that's the CA cert for uh, Kubernetes cluster. Um, this is also something you can also get from um, the service account token as well, as I recall. So uh, let me double check and make sure that I have this correctly on my cheat sheet. Yes. OK, so um, same command as cube jot, but if you could do cube cert instead, export cube cert. Export cube cert. Um, and then you're going to do that same command except we're going to have CA cert. So we might have to do some escapes here. Is it the vault namespace? Or... Yeah, so it's the vault namespace. OK. Yep. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing with the JSON path. So dash O. Uh, which, what secret, the vault? Oh, vault guess... token. Yeah, vault, vault token. token. OK. Yeah, so the CA cert is going to come from the same is going to be stored in the same secret. So you can use the same one uh, equals JSON path equals. And, and then, yeah, for now, we'll, we'll figure that out. Base 64 dash D. Um, and then we will need to do dot data. And then how do we escape the dot here? <laughs> OK, yeah, so then uh, CA backslash dot CRT. OK, let's hope that works. Uh, yeah. 
Let's see. Aha! Hey, look at that. Yeah! All right. <laughs> okay. I have not lost my ability to do JSON Ooh. pass. Okay. Uh, that's a relief. Okay. Um, so the reason why you need the set is that you need to be able to uh, identify um, the uh, identify the workload to the Kubernetes cluster from the Kubernetes cluster to Vault. So all of these attributes need to be set in order for you to properly do so. Um, so now that we've done that, we're going to do the Vault write auth slash Kubernetes slash config. Sorry, write auth. Write auth slash Kubernetes slash config. And then token underscore reviewer underscore jot. Equals dollar sign cube underscore token or cube jot. Was it cube jot? Cube jot. Yeah, cube jot. And then token, uh, sorry, Kubernetes underscore host equals cube equals dollar sign cube host. Yeah, we, we get this. Um, and then space Kubernetes underscore CA underscore CRT. Uh, and then we're going to C-E-R-T, sorry, C-E-R-T. I want to make sure I have that. Uh, yeah, equals right. cube cert. Yep. Cert. Yep. And we're going to hit it. <laughs> so, <laughs> hopefully, I type. Yeah. Yay! hopefully this works. Um, the important thing is that you may not see all of this complexity, but some of the important things that this needs, some of, this, some of the important things that the service account that has been created for Vault needs includes this cluster role uh, binding and it allows uh, allows it to do token reviews. So again, needs a little bit of elevated access. Just you know, be be aware um, if you are having trouble with setting this up on your Kubernetes cluster, it may be because your service account just doesn't have sufficient access to review tokens and the identities of tokens. Um, but it does need this in order for it to work. Okay. So now we're going to create a named what it is a named role, right? So um, again, we go through this pattern of in vault we turn on some plugin, whether it be an auth method or a secrets engine. Um, we create a config for it, and then we create a role. So we are going to create a role. Um, and this role is going to attach the service account of our application and the na application's namespace to Vault. This basically says, if you have this service account, uh, if you have this service account name and you have this namespace as part of your identity, you are allowed to authenticate to Vault. Um, but I think I forgot something, and I think I forgot to define a policy, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, uh, as part of the... yeah, as part of role, you need to define a policy. So we I need could do to define a... a policy. Okay. Yeah, uh, I missed some critical steps here, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, let me make sure I pull up the correct policy so that I don't forget which one it is. Uh... Okay, um, we're going to create a vault policy. I guess you could put this in a file somewhere. Um, yeah, um, so we're going to create a policy that allows access to the database credentials. Um, I did not create this beforehand. So path, e uh, path space, um, double quote, database slash creds slash sample dash app. Uh, and then uh, capabilities equals array uh, equals list read. Yeah, I think capabilities. Cap uh, I spell that wrong. Yeah, capabilities. Sorry. There you go. Yeah, Whatever. all good. Yeah, so we're just going to make sure that the this policy allows um, read access to the database credentials. Um, you can have more policies for you know your for other secrets, but at minimum, this should be the secret that your application needs access to. In this case, database creds sample app, and then we'll create this policy. So we'll do vault um, write policy write is a po vault policy write something like that. I think yeah, policy write. And then we'll name the policy. You can say database. We'll just keep it simple. <laughs> um, you may want to name this a little bit more specific, like what kind of database, right? Or what application the policy is associated with. There are a lot of ways that you can compose a policy. Um, write database and then uh, just do help because I, I don't need dash dash help because I don't even remember the command anymore. Yeah, I think, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, 
Yes. Yeah. So just the file. Yeah. Okay. Fall mm -hmm. policy right. I guess here we go. Database and then I think it was policy.hcl. Yep. Okay. So we have uploaded this policy. It is called database. So when we go and we create the role that allows our application to access credentials in Vault, we are going to attach the policy to it. So now we can finally do Vault write auth slash Kubernetes slash role slash uh, sample dash app. Again, there's a lot of overlapping names. I'm sorry, folks. Um, I just think it's a little bit easier to understand which relationships are where. So um, as long as you have the roles appropriately named um, under the right paths, uh, you can generally, de it's a little bit easier to debug and trace which roles belong to which applications. Um, space bound underscore service account names, service underscore account underscore names equals sample dash app, because we are, we are going to bind the service account of sample dash app um, to allow authentication vault and then space and then bound underscore service account namespaces. Well, hello, folks in chat. Namespaces uh, equals sample dash app. And then uh, space policies equals database because that's the one we just created and it, we want to limit it to just the database credentials. Space, um, what TTL would you like to have for this role? Do eight hours. Yeah, eight hours. <laughs> TTL equals eight H. Um, you can have a T, basically what this means is that once the role expires, then it will reauthenticate and renew itself. So um, that's why, you know, you still, you have the TTL of the, of the credential itself, but then you also, uh, that you can set, and this is effectively what it's saying. So the D, these database credentials will be, a, will be available for eight hours. Yeah. I think for a demo, eight hours is good. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say five minutes because oh, okay. expired. Okay. Everybody, let's yeah. not do that. Let's not do that. I, <laughs> I mean, you could, I guess it would just, in, it would just keep renewing it. So in uh, vault agent. So, I mean, for the sake of this, you know, let's do one hour. Cause you know, maybe okay, in the, one in the we, we still have like an hour go to go. So if it okay. renews, it renews and we're probably okay. So it's not a max <laughs> TTL. So what happens is that vault agent will renew it. Um, okay. So if you hit enter, Okay, so we have now a sample role uh, available, sample app role available for the sample app to use. Wow, that's great. Um, we're going to pause and answer some questions. Michael, any comments, thoughts, co commentary that you have? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is um, this is a really good. I like using um, Vault and Kubernetes together. And uh, from my experience, um, I know there's a lot of, you mentioned three different ways to use Vault and Kubernetes together. Um, this is the one that I'm more familiar with, with the Vault Agent Injector. Um, I know later on, um, I think we're going to talk about, um, I think, the Secrets Operator, and that's something that I don't have uh, too much experience with. So looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, and speaking of that, someone did ask a question, how does the agent differ from the Vault Operator? Uh, I'll briefly answer that question right now, since we may or may not get to the operator today. But um, agent runs as a sidecar in your application, and it writes it to a file. This means that your application reads secrets from a file um, and the agent will go and retrieve any new credentials for you uh, and inject them to a file somewhere. Um, the, uh, from that respect, right, the agent, it's kind of nice because then you don't have a Kubernetes secret. It, your secret is very secret. It is on a shared volume um, in your pod. And the result is that unless someone goes into the execs into the pod and then reads the file, they're not going to get access to that secret necessarily. Um, so it's nice to have that, uh, if, especially if you're locking down your secrets, you don't want anybody using Kubernetes secrets, you don't have RBAC enabled on any of your Kubernetes secrets either. So the result is that you know, you're just going to be able, anybody can access any secret, right? So your agent is going to localize the secret into a file mount that's specific to the pod. Vault Secrets Operator is a different way to run this. Vault Secrets Operator will retrieve the secret from Vault and put it into a Kubernetes secret. Um, so why would you do this, right? Uh, Vault Secrets Operator is really useful if you have a lot of Kubernetes ecosystem components that are running. So a good example of this is that if you had um, 
let's say like any GitOps tool running on your Kubernetes cluster. And that GitOps tool requires a an API token to authenticate to a container registry somewhere. Um, you can't really tell that uh, out of the box Helm chart that you might be using for that GitOps tool. You can't really tell it to use a file somewhere. Um, that's not written as part of the pattern of the Helm chart that someone has given to you, right? Or a vendor has given to you. Um, it is going to read from a Kubernetes secret. So in which case your Kubernetes secret becomes really important. Um, what the VS, what VSO does, Vault Secrets Operator, what it will do is it will retrieve the secret from Vault and put it in a Kubernetes secret. And that means that any ecosystem tooling that needs to read from that, um, from that secret, Kubernetes secret has the ability to do so. Um, VSO, uh, as short, Vault Secrets Operator does support uh, what is called a rollout restart target, which means that if you refresh the secret in Vault, like the database credentials expire, you need new ones, uh, it will write the new secret out to the Kubernetes secret um, and using what is called a rollout restart target, target deployments, and I think stateful sets, I don't remember the exact uh, which exact constructs, but definitely deployments. It will restart the deployment for you so the deployment picks up the new secret. So. Um, the two different, the, the, there are two very different approaches. One, I, Vault Agent, in my opinion, is more secure in some ways uh, because you're not putting it in a Kubernetes secret anywhere. Um, but the but the Vault Secrets operator is sort of a nice middle ground, especially if you don't plan on refactoring away from Kubernetes secrets. Okay. Um, we also have a question about can Vault define a password lifecycle for the database? Um, as Melissa mentioned, this was covered in part six. So check that out. That has all of the information on how um, password lifecycles will work for, let's say, a, a dynamic secrets engine. Um, and then someone asked about how to get HA with backup and restore in Kubernetes. Uh, this is a little bit more complicated. Um, but what you'll have to do is, uh, I guess, you know, Michael, snapshotting is probably your best option. Um, if you do want to do backup in HA and Kubernetes, is, um, I would say that HA and Kubernetes is a little bit challenging. And, you know, if the Kubernetes cluster, share Kubernetes cluster with your vault, uh, with vault goes down, then you'll probably have an issue. So definitely snapshot um, your vault cluster. That's the most reliable way to backup and restore. Um, if you are using vault enterprise or HC vault, um, you can do federated multi-cluster, uh, multi-vault, uh, so what is called performance replication, and in which case that will offer you even more HA capabilities. Okay. Um, okay. So, and then there's, I think there's a more specific question. I've installed Vault and Kubernetes using Helm. It's not able to connect to console. Um, this seems like a little bit more, I, I don't think we're going to be able to answer this in the scope of this stream. Um, but if you're using console as a backend for vault, um, it may or may not be advised. I may or may not advise you to do that, um, especially because we have the built-in integrated storage. So I recommend checking out raft first to just eliminate some of these dependencies. Um, otherwise, if you are trying to use vault and Kubernetes and connect it to console, um, you're managing both console and vault together in Kubernetes, uh, or a vault server somewhere. As for a CA is initialized, um, that one, I'm not sure either. Um, yeah, vault with raft. Yeah. So is, uh, vault with raft integrated storage. So if you look at the Helm chart, there is a raft, uh, raft stanza in there that you can configure. Um, I don't. I think while we have traditionally supported the console backend, especially if you're running in <laughs> Kubernetes, um, it is better to uh, just build, use the built-in integrated storage. Um, okay, and then there's a question about VSO. With VSO, doesn't that impact all pods that are accessing a database if the secret changes? Uh, is the old secret valid until the rollout is completed with the new secret? It's a good question. Um, so the way that uh, leasing works is that the old secret is not going to be valid. Um, it is going to, the lease will revoke um, the secret. So it will not be valid and it will disrupt any pods that are accessing the database. Uh, how, however, um, there is a, Vault Agent does handle this a little bit more uh, elegantly. Um, once the one third of the time of the lease is done, then it will um, revoke, uh, it will revoke and renew. So. Uh, agent handles it a little bit better. I don't know what the, in the, in VSO, what the controller is doing. Um, it will, I believe it just replaces the old secret, but it, I don't think it, 
actually revokes the old secret until it's uh, until the new secret has been officially rolled out. So I don't know. We need to check timing on VSO. It might actually be the case that there's a there's an overlapping time. As I recall, I think there was a design. There was part of that was part of the design. There's like a little bit of overlap. So we can check that when we do it. Okay. All right. Back to Vault Agent. <laughs> With that diversion, I know people are asking about VSO. We're probably we're gonna try to get it through this one. We're at the top of the hour, so let's we're gonna try to get through agent right now. Um, okay, so now that we set up the vault auth method, uh, we needed uh, the Kubernetes auth method on vault. We have you have to do this for both agent and for VSO anyway. By the way, so just letting anybody know who's looking at this, you do have to set this up anyway. Just something to re recognize. Uh, so we set up the vault auth method for Kubernetes, the Kubernetes auth method for vault. Um, and now we, I guess we are going to try to uh, inject a secret into our application. Um, okay, so Michael, if you could go back to your sample app YAML, this is an example. There we are. Me shrink some stuff. There yeah, we go. There we are. Okay, so this is a sample application. Uh, I I don't know what else to describe this as, um, other than it is a sample application that retrieves some stuff from a database, um, and it needs database credentials. It needs a database username and a database password. Um, it is currently, if you scroll down, it is currently retrieving stuff from a Kubernetes secret, and um, this is something we want to move away from. So. Um, Actually, you might need to rebase this. If you, yeah, you might have to rebase, Michael. Just do a git pull. Yeah, git pull. So oh, hold on, I'm getting there. May have to rebase this because I updated this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we can go back down and then see the updated version. Um. So there's a couple things. It is retrieving it from an environment variable. So if you scroll down, um, it is using username, password from an environment variable. Um, this application has the option to use a config file instead. So we're actually going to be writing things to a config file. Um, but as it stands right now, it's using the username and password from the Kubernetes database Kubernetes secret that's defined in Kubernetes. Um, so we're not we are going to actually refactor this so it doesn't use it anymore. So if you go up to the annotations. Um, the agent and the vault agent injector looks for annotations on the pod. Um, so we are going to uncomment these annotations. Yep. Um, and the first thing we are going to do is we're going to double check all these values. Uh, vault hashicorp.com agent inject means that it will inject the agent. You can deploy the helm chart uh, for vault um, and it will automatically inject it but you probably don't want that. Um, you might decide you only want uh, certain things to be injected. Um, and you have a role. So this is the sample app role here. Um, this is going to need to match your Kubernetes role. Um, so it's not going to match your data. Is it your database role? No, yeah, your Kubernetes role. Um, it will need to match your Kubernetes auth method role here. Which is what we just set up in the last command, yeah, right? Exactly, precisely. Um, and so then there's a couple other annotations here that are important. Um, the, these are going to define the secret. Uh, I'm going to pull up the annotations so that folks have that reference on hand. All agent injector annotations. I'm going to put that there. Um, so there's a couple uh, annotations that you can add here. Um, there's vault.hashcore.com slash agent inject secrets. It's the prefix for the file that you're going to write to. So that's the prefix of the secret <laughs> um, that you're going to access. And then you add on the file name that you're going to create. Um, we, In our case, we are going to create the file name app.env. Uh, that's standard to our, to our app. So let's hope it works because I didn't actually test this out. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Um, so then we're going to inject the secret to app.env, and this is going to be the secret, the name of the secret. So in our case, it will be database slash creds slash sample dash app. Yep. Okay. 
And the next thing is the template. Um, as you, as folks recall, Vault Agent has a templating system. Um, this means that it will write it out to a file template of your choosing. Uh, we are going to write it out to a file template uh, with two attributes, username and password. I, I think we'll just keep the database address as an environment variable, so that way I don't have to do more um, refactor. But let me just pull up the correct syntax for um, for the processor. Not the processor. One second. I'm trying to double check. OK. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do, instead of the double quotes, we're going to use, we're going to put pipe and then hit enter. Um, and our, yeah, it will be db underscore user, uh, half, sorry, uppercase, all uppercase in this situation because it's um, an app.env. So, oh, right. yeah, db username equals, uh, and you can just leave it blank for now. Uh, yeah, we're going to template it out. And then password equals. So this is the file that we're hoping to to template out. Um, but we need to tell the agent how to inject these values. So Michael, you already started this with the Go template, but we're going to do squiggle squiggle space dot date capital D data dot data dot username. Um, this is the attribute in the database secrets engine. So remember when Michael did a database slash creds slash sample app, it came out with a data username and a data password. So we're going to do the same thing for password data dot data dot password. OK, um, this isn't sufficient. Uh, the templating go templating needs also to know which secret it's supposed to be accessing. Um, so you want at the very beginning of this file, I'm going to hit enter and then squiggle, squiggle. Um, you're going to do a dash because we don't want the uh, yeah dash next to that. We don't want the new line. So with secret and then quotes, space quotes, double quotes, and then uh, database slash creds slash sample dash app. Dash app. Dash. Yep. Sorry. And then we're going to close that with us at the end of the file, squiggle, squiggle, dash, space, end. Yep. Awesome. You know, the, you've done this before. I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, do you know the templating, got like the, the vault agent template by heart now? A little bit. I, I have to reference, you know, documentation all the time, but yeah. um, I, I'm a little familiar with uh, the Go templating syntax. Nice. Yeah, so um, this is the way that you're going to take the secret from database cred sample app and then take the attributes of username and password and pass them to a file. Um, again, you know, you could get very complicated with this. Um, if you have multiple files, for example, you can specify multiple files with different secrets. Um, if you have to use different secrets, right? You have database credentials and then you have a queue, a password or something for Redis, I don't know, then you have to do them in two separate files. Uh, I know it's a little bit cumbersome, um, but the way that the Vault Agent works is that it's assuming one secret to retrieve from per sets of files and things like that. So that is one downside to it. If you do have multiple secrets that you have to pull from things, you will have to template them out separately. Um, OK, so finally, we have the inject command at the end. Um, inject command, we are, do we want to configure this right now? I'm debating. Um, the minute we start doing this, I'm, it's going to go down the rabbit hole of like more of more config. Uh, so inject command, as if folks were tuning in on the other streams, Vault Agent has a command exec um, or exec command section uh, that will allow refresh and reload of some target process. This is actually what's going to allow you to reload and refresh your application um, once a secret changes. This is really important. You're your application doesn't change automatically just because a new secret came in. Um, most application frameworks do require you to refresh um, whatever connection strings, whatever database connections that you have. Uh, we are, I mean, this application is in Go, so there is actually no, I didn't put any refresh or retry, cap, uh, refresh capability in the application. So it won't just automatically refresh its database connection. Um, 
there, you, I think last week we talked about this with Spring. Uh, if you are using Spring Boot, for example, um, you can do refresh scope and the and a combination of the actuator will allow you to refresh and hot reload the application. So you don't have to refresh everything. Um, we might as well show this because it's probably better we show this. <laughs> um, <laughs> what we're actually going to do uh, is we are going to um, issue a SIG term. Uh, we'll see if this works. So if you do a pipe instead of the quotes, um, hit enter, uh, we're going to do kill space dash T E R M, uh, space, um, dollar sign parenthesis PID, uh, print, not squiggles. Sorry. Just print regular rounded. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, P I D of pit of uh what is the hold on let me double check what i what i ran in here uh sample dash vault dash app so hopefully this is going to work um and there is a good question in the chat so this command is not executed on the sidecar but the main container this is executed on the sidecar to the process of uh, the application container. This is very nuanced. Um, currently, the config that we have now is not going to allow you to just kill the process, the application process, um, because they're in two separate containers, right? So as someone in chat pointed out, they're in two separate containers. You've got the sidecar container, you've got the application container. They don't share the same process namespace. They don't share, that's the, that's the whole point of running containers. Um, so what we have to do is we actually have to add a few additional settings in order for it to be able to re to be able to access a process in another container and share that process namespace. So this is the annoying part of this. Um, we're going to add a couple new a couple other annotations. So the first is uh, Michael, if you could add vault.hashicorp.com slash. Just at the bottom here. Vault. Yeah, you can just add it at the bottom. Um, slash um, agent dash run dash as dash same dash user. Yep. And then colon uh, true and string. And then, yeah, I think you have to escape with it. Yep. Uh, and then we also in our spec. Let me double check that I have all that. Yeah, we're good. Okay. And then under the spec, if you can go under service account name, uh, yeah, if you can hit enter and do share process namespace. Is the capital P yep, process capital P. namespace. Mm -hmm. And then true. Uh, yep. That's that. Is that a string as well or is that? That is, yeah, that's a string as well. Okay. Okay. So uh, we also have to add a security context. So if you can add a security context, I think that's on the same level as liveness probe. So if you go into the container section and you go uh, same level as liveness probe, if you do security and uh, security context. Um, and then we are going to do, hold on, uh, run as user. Uh, yeah, enter run as user. Uh, run, just yeah. run. Uh, hit enter. Oh. Yeah. So security context and then tab run as user. Context. Tab. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Rem yeah, remove the okay. run. Remove oh, okay. the run on line yeah. 88 and then do yeah, tab run. run and then capital A as and then capital user. Run as user 1,000, run as group 3,000. I don't know if that's for sure the group, but we'll see. Group 3,000. Yeah. Um, OK, so why do all of this? Uh, you have to share process namespace, because if you are issuing a termination signal from your vault agent, that's a separate container. By default, containers in a pod don't share process namespaces. So you do have to tell it to share the process namespace, and you also have to tell it the security context that you're going to be running as. Um, very, very important. Uh, without these attributes set, you will not be able to issue a termination signal, termination signal from Vault Agent when the secret changes. So uh, that's a little bit. Uh, if you have um, 
a security policy that means uh, that says you cannot do this, then um, you might not be able to do a refresh like this. Uh, what you'll have to do instead is create a refresh endpoint to the application and tell the application itself to live reload. Um, so there are a couple frameworks that will allow for this. Some of the .NET ones do it. Some of the definitely Spring Boot will do it if you set up the actuator for it. Um, you can also on you know some of the, Go, the with the Go application, for example, you could do it as well. You just have to write it yourself. So these are things to know. Um, we're going to apply the change. Uh, oh no, we haven't. We we didn't actually change anything yet. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is that because we are creating a config file now, um, we need to set a config file path. So Michael, if you could go to um, the environment variables and if you can change db underscore username to config underscore file underscore path, all caps. Change this here to config underscore file underscore path. And we are going to um, pass it to a, we are, we're going to have to look for the file. So the file that uh, if you do value instead of value from, if you could just delete everything from 79 to 80, yeah, you know, to 87. Yeah. And we'll do value. Yep. Um, we're going to tell it the config file path to read from when you use vault agent, it by default writes to vault uh, slash vault slash secrets. And that's all it's going to do. You don't even have to do app.env because oh, um, okay. that's part of the application. So what this will tell the application to do is read attributes from the config file, the config file path. Um, overrides will go in environment variables. Uh, why is this application written this way? It's because it's a sample application that shows both patterns. Um, so that way we can show the environment variable formulation as well as the config, uh, as well as a config file based formulation. Uh, because Vault Agent does require config files. Now, there is a way for you to do this without, um, you can do this without. Uh, setting a config file path. If your application takes environment variables, um, you can do like a source uh, from the environment variable um, file that you've defined uh, and then pass it to your entry point. This means you do have to override the entry point though. So if you want to keep your application's entry point the way it is, you don't want to do any overrides in Kubernetes in the Kubernetes manifest, then you just keep it the way it is. Um, but if you are planning to use environment variables and you're never going to refactor to a config file path, then you will you can do source and then um, start the entry point, but you'll have to override that in your Kubernetes file. Hope does that make sense, Michael? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if it doesn't make sense, people pipe up in chat, please. Um, I have examples for both, but uh, we're just going to do it this way for now. Um, okay. So we're going to redeploy this and hope it works. <laughs> so we're going to kubectl apply. Do I need to specify the namespace here? No, or, no that, that's built in. in there. Yeah. Right. Okay. This may or may not deploy. We shall see. Oh, invalid. Okay. Uh, oh, it's the bool. Yeah, you have to do something, I guess. Uh, somewhere in here, I think true share process namespace. True. I had it as a string. Oh, no, that's probably. Let's okay. Try that again. Aha. There we go. Yeah. OK. Um, there we are. OK, let's check that it's actually deploying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it is. It could be crash loop back off, in which case, you know, we would we'll spend an entire stream debugging it. Um, OK, so you'll notice there's a couple of things going on. It's doing an init container. So you'll see sample app is coming up. It's running an init. Uh, when, it, when you first start the injector, again, it injects two things, an init container and a sidecar container. The init container goes and retrieves the secret just so that the secret is available for um, the application on startup. And then the sidecar continuously runs to verify that the secret hasn't changed. So we are hoping that init container will come up eventually. But given that it hasn't, it's probably not working. Um, so let's just check what's going on. Um, if you do kubectl logs dash n sample app, and then you do the pod, that pod ID, um, we should be able to see the uh, init container logs, the vault agent init container logs. 
Uh, yeah, if you could do vault agent init. Is that dash C, right? Yeah, vault, yeah, vault dash agent, agent dash init. Um, and I, there was a request in the chat for the example. I will post a link to the example. Uh, oh. There's a repository, so there you go. That's a Aha! <laughs> Our lovely, lovely yeah. SSL. Everybody. Oh, SSL. Okay. Do count. Is there an annotation to disable SSL? <laughs> uh, uh, TLS certificates to use. TLS, TLS, skip verify. Yeah, vault.hashicorp.com slash TLS dash skip verify. <laughs> You should not do this. You should load your vault certificate uh, for it to use, but we are using a self-signed cert. Um, so uh, it's going to be a little bit challenging to distribute it. Okay, there we go. And Is that we'll just, deploy. just like that? Yep, that's it. Um, otherwise, we would have to store it into a Kubernetes secret. Uh, again, you know, chicken or egg problem. Um, but it is a self-signed cert, so we would need to store it into a uh, Kubernetes into a Kubernetes secret for the agent to use. Um, and just for the sake of time, we're going to avoid that. Now, well, let's see what's going on. Now. Okay, so we got an error. Um, that's different. So we'll logs on that pod. Okay. Uh, evaluating interface. There is no username, apparently. Did we change, did this change? That is a good question. Um, okay, so executing something at template. So something went funny with the template, I guess. Oh, it's not, yeah, sorry. It's data.username, there's no data, sorry. Data.data .data is for a static secret. Data that's, is- Yeah, the KV2 engine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I know, I was okay. like, I knew I did something. So yeah, the second data is not necessary. Um, if okay. you're doing KV, you do need data.data. .data. If you're not doing KV because you're doing a secrets engine, a dynamic secrets engine like the database one, you don't need it. So um, I was reading the wrong example. Yeah, and for KV, it's data.data .data because there's also uh, data dot metadata. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I got a little confused when there's like, oh, why is there- Oh, I know. <laughs> Multiple it's very things. confusing because you're like, why can I not find this at the path? It's because there is a data path. <laughs> yes, there's so. a metadata and yeah, data. Yeah. Okay, so let's try that again. Yay. Okay. Um. Okay, so it is running. Wow, Ooh. look at that. <laughs> um. All right, so it's running. Uh, so the, you'll notice there's two out of two, right? Previously, it was one out of one. Now it's two out of two. Two out of two is that one is the application container and one is the vault agent sidecar. Um, so if you do logs on that pod, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, dash n sample dash app. Oh, that's right. Yep. So you notice a couple important things. Um, uh, this is a make, it makes it a lot easier for everything to get printed out. But um, you'll notice that the first is the config file path. So it's reading the config file from Vault Secrets. Um, and so just to show that I'm not just like passing in username and password, root username and password, you'll notice that that is the connection string. Uh, it has this lovely v dash cube sample app thing here. That is the username. And um, we talked about this last week. You can template this in a different way, in a user, the username in a different way if you want. Um, there's the password. Uh, and then we're connecting to my RDS instance. So um, I guess, yeah, if you, uh, if you want to get the, the URL, the, the load balancer DNS name from the service, um, we can run a call against it just to show that it's actually retrieving stuff. Curl that thing 8080 slash products. Yep. And you'll notice that it retrieves the products. Um, so that's that. I mean, do, should we go in more detail somewhere? Like, are we missing something here? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, we have our application up and running. Yeah, there we are. Magical. I know, right? That's great. Um, 
Yeah, so there are a lot of other uh, annotations as well. Um, the other annotations that might be important is that if you're running in a service mesh um, and you want to inject secrets in an application and you have a sidecar for a service mesh, for example, um, you do want to do agent. There's an annotation called agent init first that will ensure that the vault agent runs first uh, before your uh, sidecar or your service mesh is injected. Um, I do say this because um, there are folks who are who are often finding that they have an order of operations issue when they do both an agent injection as well as a service mesh injection or some other sidecar injection. So if you do want to make sure your secrets are injected first from the very beginning, um, you can do agent init, uh, and then that will allow, you to, allow it to start the vault agent to start first over and precede all other containers. Um, if you are doing static secrets, there is a templating interval. And um, so you can set uh, a template interval, a static secret render interval um, to just check for the static changes to the static secret and recreate the template. So same thing applies. Um, and then there are also ways if you need the vault token for some reason, um, sometimes this is necessary if maybe you need to, if you're using a transit secrets engine or something else um, and you want to pass a, a vault token through. Um, you can also cache the vault token as well um, using the agent. So you can set a lot of these settings so you don't have to worry about it. Anyway, that's that for vault agent. We heard people who wanted VSO. So we're going to see if we can run through VSO. Um, I, I, I'll pause for a second because there was a request in chat can you provide how to install Vault with Raft and TLS generated per production? Um, check out the repository I linked that has Vault with the integrated storage as well as um, the TLS generated. Um, and if you are curious to replay the series, there is the series, there's a playlist on YouTube so you can review back to any part that you've missed, including part two, which is the server auto join. Um, the one that we have, configuration we have is in EC2 instances. It's not on Kubernetes for a few reasons. Um, it's so that you can um, control resource consumption as well. So we deployed our Vault servers on EC2, uh, and then we're connecting using Vault Agent on Kubernetes um, using that external Vault address. OK. Anything else that I miss, Michael, before we move on to VSO? Um. I don't. I don't think so. Is there a is there a SaaS solution in, in case you don't want to manually deploy Vault yourself? Oh yeah. So there is HTTP Vault. That's a good question. There is HTTP Vault. Um, it is a cloud uh, offering. So if you want to, um, if you want to just do this part, you don't even want to manage your own Vault. You can use HTTP Vault. Uh, and the process that we showed today is the same exact process. You connect it to the external vault address. And then as long as you configure your HTTP vault cluster with Kubernetes auth method, then you're pretty much good to go. Um, oh, yes. And there was a question about, will it apply with Istio sidecar? So it will not, as long as you ensure that you set an annotation to initialize the agent for the vault agent first. Um, that means it gives the container, uh, the vault agent time to start, grab the secrets, inject it into your application container, and then your sidecar and everything else can start up correctly. Um, so I always mention this because there are a lot of folks who do end up running service mesh sidecars and various other sidecars, not just service mesh, but like metric sidecars as well on Kubernetes. Um, and so there's a confusion of order of operations. So, uh, but just set an annotation. I think it's agent init first or something. Okay. Uh, Vault Secrets Operator, here we go. Uh, this one I didn't actually plan for, so hopefully we get it running. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, here is, okay, so um, we talked about agent. You'll notice with agent, agent um, was going to retrieve a secret from Vault and then write it to a file. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't use environment variables. It just means that you don't use a Kubernetes secret. It just means that your application will have to source uh, the secrets from that file that's written by Vault Agent. Um, from a security standpoint, it means you don't need the Kubernetes secret. You're not going to possibly expose it by plain text. Um, so, you know, it's in some ways a little more secure, uh, but you may not feel comfortable running writing your secrets to a file because that's just not an application pattern that you're, um, it's not an application architecture that you support. So um, there are plenty of, plenty of reasons why people don't write to a file. Most applications end up using environment variables by default. So, um, you know, you might just decide this is an easier route. Vault Secrets Operator is an operator. 
Um, it creates a set of custom resource definitions, and these custom resource definitions allow you to retrieve information from Vault um, and then write it to a Kubernetes secret. That's that's the workflow. So the first thing we're going to do is install uh, Vault Secrets Operator. Um, Vault Secrets Operator uh, is going to have a Helm chart of its own. So if you do Helm search, uh, well, no, we don't need to actually Helm search. Uh, we just do the install. Um, let me see if there's any special file, any special values. But um, the it's going to be the Helm install. Uh, I guess we should put it in its own namespace. Yeah, dash dash create dash namespace. Uh, yeah, VSO. And then um, it's going to be space, we'll name it vault dash secrets dash operator because, you know, we are very verbose. Space <laughs> HashiCorp slash vault dash secrets dash operator. Okay. And then before you do anything, I'm going to just double check that there are no values that we have to pass through. Um, there's values like controller. It's a controller. So you might find that, you know, there's not much you need to configure out of the box. If you need to scale your controller, you can do that as well. Um, but there's, for the most part, not much there. Um, there's maybe stuff that you can set like default vault connection. Um, in the Helm chart, you can tell the controller, the operator, that you have a default vault connection that you're going to make. Um, and you can also say that there's a default auth method as well. Um, we probably want to, hmm. Yeah, I think we're okay. Kubernetes auth method specification. I think we're probably okay. We'll just deploy it and see how it goes. I don't know if we want to do a default vault connection here. It just kind of makes it easier because you'll have to specify a vault connection for every secret that you create. So maybe we'll just set the default vault connection anyway. Um, if you could create a new values.yaml file, uh, we'll call it VSO values or something.yaml. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull this up in the repository. Hang on a second. Uh, OK, let me just make sure I pull up the Helm chart for this. Um, and I'll pull up the values. OK, um, so we are going to do default vault connection vault connection, which is top level. So if you could do default vault connection, um, capital V vault, capital C connection, um, and then hit enter. Um, yep. Hit enter, and then we'll do a tab enabled false, enabled true. Enabled or enabled? Yeah, enabled. Okay. And then hit enter. And then we're going to do address, a uh, tab address. And then we're going to pop in the vault address. Now, the question is how did I do this before? Uh, yeah, by the way, folks, I am referencing Terraform for this because I just put it all into Terraform. <laughs> So I put it all in Terraform to do all of this deployment automatically, and I forgot which configs I set. <laughs> um, OK, address. And then the other thing we're going to do is uh, we also want to set um, skip TLS, all caps. Uh, skip TLS. is not all caps, yeah. So skip TLS verify, but TLS verify with capital V. Yep. And then uh, true, space true. So we're going to skip it again because we didn't, we forgot to load the certs in. I forgot to do that. So we're just going to do that for now. Um, but this will allow us to set a default vault connection. This means that uh, you usually have to set a vault auth, a vault connection custom resource. Um, if let's say you have different vault clusters and you want to make sure you're connecting properly to them uh, across namespaces and things like that, then you would define a custom resource called vault connection and be more specific on it. But um, in our case, we have one vault one vault cluster. We're just going to use this out of the box. Um, all right, so the next thing is we'll just do, you know what, we'll just leave it the way it is. And then we'll do the auth method ours, uh, separately. OK. All right, so let's do that space f uh, values 
VSO values or whatever we named that file. Yep. Okay, let's hope that worked. <laughs> okay, so let's check um, the VSO namespace. And what you will see is that there is a Vault Secrets Operator Controller Manager. It is waiting. Um, we are waiting for it to create. I don't know if it will completely be ready, but we will see. There it is. There we are. Okay. Um, so the Controller Manager, it's, uh, it's pretty much the operator itself. That's pretty much it. Um, I don't know what the second container is. It's been a while since I checked it out, but... Um, there's a controller, and I think there may be telemetry or something enabled. So we got that information there. OK, now that we've enabled it, um, what you will do is check out the CRD. So if you do kubectl get CRDs, and then um, we'll get a list of CRDs, see what's on there. Is that in a specific namespace? or No, it's not namespaced. OK, so you notice there's a couple new CRDs, uh, vault auths.secret, vault connections, vault dynamic secrets, vault PKI, vault static. Um, these are new CRDs that have been added as part of the operator. Um, vault auths, for example, is for that vault auth. Like which vault server are you connecting to? Or, sorry, vault auth is for the auth method. Vault connections is for which vault server you're connecting to. And the rest are secrets. So the first thing we're going to do is define a vault auth, um, uh, the vault auth to point to our Kubernetes auth method. Uh, so let me grab that first. If I can find it, hmm, secrets. Aha. Okay. Is it better if I send this to you over StreamYard or Slack? Probably Slack. Give me one second, Michael. I'm going to send this okay. to you by Slack. Okay. It'll be a little bit easier, I think. Um, hmm. Okay. We're going to just do this. And then I think there's some changes. That we're, there are going to be some changes to it, but this is the example I have. So. We'll just make some changes to this. OK, there we are. OK. All right, you're going to pop that into a file somewhere. We're going to change that a bit. It's not all going to be. What should I call this file? Um, You can call this vault-auth. OK, so there are a couple of things we're going to change. Um, first is you can delete the namespace admin. That doesn't do anything for us. Um, we can also delete the annotations, because this was using uh, sync, <laughs> some sync. Um, uh, we're also going to define the namespace as sample app, because that's where our application is. So the reason why that um, you might decide to use VSO as well is that maybe you're using GitOps tooling, and you want to keep everything, you want to declare everything that's set up for the application in, in a namespace. and you know, you want to deploy that um, using CR uh, custom resources. So um, after line, uh, so line five, let's change pr payments processor to sample app. Let's just change everything to sample app. Um, the role is also sample app, service account, sample app, um, and the audience is vault. Um, we'll keep that. But uh, namespace will also be sample app. Under metadata. Under metadata. So this is basically saying similar to what we did before, right, with the vault agent, which is you're if you are from the sample app namespace and using the sample app role and the sample app service account, you can authenticate to vault. <laughs> That's all it's setting up. Um, we've already set up the role to do this. So remember, you still have to set up the Kubernetes auth method. It's not like you can't. Um, you have to set up the Kubernetes auth method in order to allow this to happen. If not, um, you know, then it will not have sufficient permission to check the token identity. So you will have to set up the Kubernetes auth method, and you will also probably have you will also deploy the Helm chart, the Vault Helm chart, with um, the service accounts to be able to review those these tokens. So um, that's the first thing we're going to do. And the second thing we're going to do is define a dynamic secret. So there are a couple different um, uh, there are a couple different uh, seat custom resources. One of them is dynamic secrets, and that's the one we're going to use to define 
the uh, define the database credentials into a Kubernetes secret. So I'm going to pull them up one moment. Pull up an example of this. Um, if I can find it, please tell me I can find the dynamic database secrets because I think I have an example somewhere. Hmm, maybe I do not have an example somewhere for it. Let's see, payments. Okay, um, we're gonna change this and see if maybe we can, let me just send it to you and then we'll change it. We okay. might have some different attributes as well, so. Oh no, I do have an example of this. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Let me send this over. Okay. This is what happens when you have we ha when you have too many of these like examples floating around. One second. Ignore that one. There is a static secret. Um, there's a static secret definition that I just sent. I sent to my go first. Um, the static secret is for quite literally static secrets. Nothing different there. Um, but this we're gonna use dynamic secrets. Yeah, um, this means that it's going to handle refresh, right? So, uh, or it's going to also target a refresh. We're going to take out the annotation because we are not using Argo CD. Um, the dynamic secret, uh, we're, we can call it sample app database or something. Uh, and then the mount is not Terraform. The mount, uh, oh yes, we need the namespace sample app as well. Everything must be done in the namespace coinciding with the application. Um, okay, so then the mount is database. The path is creds slash sample app, of course. Um, destination create true. So this means that if, this, if the secret doesn't exist, then it will get created. Um, and then you're going to name it. You could, you could call it database, I guess, database. Um, and then the vault auth ref, ref, I think, was sample app. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so theoretically, if we deploy this, this should create a, a Kubernetes secret called database. Actually, no, because we already have a database secret. So let's just override that. If you could do um, database dash vault, just so we could differentiate in under 26, on 26, sorry, not on that. On 26 database dash vault. So there's the original database credentials, which I loaded as a static secret, uh, you know, as part of Kubernetes, because that was how where we started. Um, and I don't want to override it because I do want to show that is actually creating the secret. Um, this mm -hmm. is going to be creating it in database dash vault. Um, and all of this will be handled by the defined auth method, as well as the connection that we set by default. Okay, so we're going to apply that. I am pretty sure that we are going to get it. I don't know. We'll see. Will we get it? Okay, it was created. Let's see if it synced. Um, let's do a kubectl get vault auth dash n sample app. It has, yeah, so it hadn't been asked, but there it will be. I'm going to try to get a nomad session, a full nomad session. So just like that? Doing, yeah, just like that. Yeah. Uh, vault, oh. uh, sorry, vault auth. No, no dash. No space, no dash, just all one. Oh, yep. just, okay, there we go. Because it's the custom resource. Oh, oh my goodness oh. gracious. <laughs> <laughs> what, what just okay. happened? <laughs> yeah, what just happened? Okay, so then you see Vault Auth um, has been created. That's fine. Um, let's do Vault, Sec Vault Dynamic Secrets. Vault Dynamic Secret. Right. Sorry, Vault Dynamic Secret. Dash N, Vault Sample App. Vault. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Okay. So 63 seconds. Um, and then let's do kubectl get secrets in sample app. Let's just see if it actually pulled that in or not. Um, we should hopefully see a database dash vault uh, secret. There we are. Uh, you'll notice that it has three attributes. <laughs> um, you can, you know what? Why not? Print it out. If you do uh, kubectl dash n sample app dash o space dash o. Uh, YAML database dash vault, not all of them, but yeah, space database dash vault. And then, okay. yeah, we'll just do that secret. I don't want to expose the other secrets. So you'll notice there's the raw JSON that comes out, the raw data that comes out of the secrets engine, and then you have the password and the username. That's, wow. 
Uh, now, how is this relevant for your application? Um, so that means that um, you can use a Kubernetes secret in your application. Um, so our application started out using a Kubernetes secret, right? Using value from and the environment variables. Pretty much the same thing. You just point it to the database vault um, secret instead of the database secret, for example. Um, unfortunately, this also means that you know someone can look at your secrets and potentially extract it, but you know it's not so bad, I guess, if um, if your plan is to rotate this fairly regularly, right? And you have control of it through vault. Um, one of the things I did want to call out uh, is that if you go back to the vault dynamic secrets. Uh, dot yaml sorry the um oh. vault auth dot yaml yeah vault auth dot yaml here yeah what i do want to point out and i and we're going to add this is um what happens if the secret needs to be rotate if the secrets rotate um what you can do is that if you do a tab michael and you uh type roll out restart targets under the spec here yeah under spec mm -hmm. roll Roll out it, without the capital O. Yeah, restart, restart, capital R, targets, and then colon, enter, and then start a YAML list. So dash kind, uh, kind colon, deployment. Capital D. Yep, capital D. And then enter name, sample dash app. What this will do is it will tell, it, it will use the built-in Kubernetes rollout restart uh, mechanism um, to restart the target. So if you have a deployment, if you have a stateful set, a replica set, or not replica set, what's the other list of things? Um, stateful set, I think Damon said as well, uh, it will restart using the uh, out of the box rollout restart um, mechanism in Kubernetes. So if the database credentials change, then, you know, you, it will just roll it out. Um, so let's apply this, the vault auth.yaml. Yep. All right. So for the most part, it's pretty much unchanged. Um, let's actually get the the pass the username um, out of the the database dash vault credentials. That would keep CTL get. Mm -hmm. Secrets. Actually. Or was that one of you, you know wanted what? the data? Yeah, you know what? Let's actually change up the YAML file. Um, if you could go back to the YAML file uh, for the application, so the sample app.yaml. Sorry for jumping around. Nope. Yeah, so if we go here, um, if you could copy this and put it into a back into a backup somewhere <laughs> so that no, we have no. this in perpetuity so you don't delete it <laughs> just okay. copy it somewhere you could just even send it to me over slack because then i'll use it uh for context for folks who are not so familiar what happens is that every time um in the past melissa would write like would run these configs and stuff i would just actually copy paste them out of boundary session recordings <laughs> and just put them in automation so i didn't have to go back so michael if you could just send that to me so that way uh I don't have to think yeah. about that later. Okay. And then you can just, um, if you can just get checkout, uh, you can just uh, un discard all changes in there. So we're going to discard all changes under sample app in Git. All right. So, yeah. all right. Git, I'll let you. Yeah. Uh, Git checkout um, space dash dash space Kubernetes slash sample dash app. .io. Kubernetes slash or just Kubernetes slash, it's fine. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. So now it should reset it. Um, yeah, go back to that. Uh, why are we resetting it? Because, well, we're using environment variables and we're using Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes secrets again. So um, I'm just gonna do this so that we don't have the agent injector anymore. Um, we're just gonna go revert back to this. So if you could do database dash vault on line 74, uh, not, not 69, because that one is the address. But uh, yeah, 79 as well, database dash vault. Um, and then let's deploy this uh, sample app.yaml. Yep, there we go. Okay, um, so let's just check that the pod rolled out. 
since we have 15 minutes anyway, we might as well go through the process of refreshing it. <laughs> so notice no agent injector anymore. It's still running. Um, if you could do a uh, curl against um, the application endpoint and then slash creds. I don't remember what the load balancer address was, but. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, this will output the credentials. So these are, okay, so you'll notice that it's, uh, yeah, 170991. Um, so these are the database credentials that have been have been um, uh, offered to this, to this application. Um, what we're going to do, I guess, is we could revoke this. We could try revoking it. We don't have the lease ID, but we could try revoking it. Um, let me make sure I have the correct command to revoke. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to revoke the lease and force force a rotation. So uh, we'll do vault space lease space revoke space uh, dash force space dash prefix space database slash creds slash sample out. We could just do slash sample out. <laughs> sample out. Okay, so this will force revoke anything under this uh, secrets mount. So if you just hit enter, um, it will revoke any leases, um, which means that if we try to use those credentials, um, you'll probably notice that it won't work. So if you do cred, if you go uh, to the command to curl, uh, the curl command again, mm -hmm. um, and let's issue creds, let's see what happens. Um, it's still using it. If you do products, curl, um, curl slash products, You'll notice that it is permission denied because we revoked those. Um, we'll see. We'll see if the operator picks it up <laughs> uh, and actually redeploys it. So if you do kubectl get pods um, and you check if the, check the sample app, um, it might take a little bit of time for it to register that something has gone wrong. Did we do it two minutes ago? Is it already running? No, I guess it. I think we are. We deployed it two minutes ago, right? Has it been yeah. two minutes already? Yeah. yeah, since I think since we deployed the the new changes, yes. Yeah, um, the operator will take a little bit of time to realize that the lease has been revoked, and then once it does, it will restart everything. And we can check the operator logs just to see. So if you do um, kubectl get pods uh, dash nvso, um, let's see uh, the logs of the secrets operator. Um, we can just see if there's if it's uh, registering something. We kind of abruptly revoked it, so it might take some time for it to recognize that something's been happening. So, all right, this is a nice example. Um, you'll notice there's a bunch of debug stuff happening, uh, but it basically recognized the link has, uh, the lease has gone, um, the lease is gone, so the secret has been rotated. Uh, and then now a rollout restart has been triggered for the sample app, which means that the uh, pods will be gradually rolled out um, with the new secret. So if we check the pods again, Sample-app. Okay, so, well, maybe it actually was fine. Um, <laughs> if you curl products, let's see. Oh, no, it's still permission denied. I guess it didn't read it. Somehow, maybe we didn't get the deployment correct, but let me mm -hmm. see. Sample app deployment. Was I supposed to say namespace? Maybe it was in the wrong namespace. Hmm, hold on. One second. Let me check if it needs a namespace. Uh, secret spec. Rollout restart target. Um, kind of name. No, it should be the same. Um, it started by patching the resources spec. Uh, if you check uh, kubectl get pods dash, uh, uh, if we did the pods for the sample app, And then uh, if you do space dash O YAML, so let's get some more details on it. We should see a, let's check the annotations. There should be some annotation here that indicates if it has indeed been, let's see. Um, hmm. There is no annotation indicating that it has been patched. 
Um, let's get secrets and let's just check the database secrets that are in uh, kubectl get secrets in um, dash n sample app. 12 minutes ago. Fascinating. Mm. Huh. Did we not write it to the correct place? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. Let, let me check the logs again. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Maybe it didn't roll out. Let's check the logs on the operator again. Let's see. What was that? That was at, that was about 10 minutes ago. So maybe, yeah, maybe that, was... that wasn't correct. That was the original one. Yeah. Uh, but it did already rotate the secret. Uh huh. It could also, there, I think there might be two replicas, maybe. Hold on. Is there a second replica here? Maybe not. Probably not. Um, okay. Hmm. Fascinating. <laughs> uh, it could be, I mean, we did abruptly, uh, we did abruptly kill the lease. So there was that. Um, hmm. How fascinating. How fascinating. We did abruptly kill the lease. So in this situation, you might have to reapply um, the stat the dynamic secret. So if you can delete the vault auth and then recreate the vault auth, we'll, we'll probably start it all over again. Uh, should it just reapply or? Uh, reapply, I think we have to re, yeah, I think you have to delete and then recreate or patch it with some annotation or something. Yeah, is that just cube CTL delete? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dash F. Yeah. I also could have configured the dynamic secrets API, like the, the rollout restart might not be in the right level. Uh, let's see, rollout restart target. Alas, static creds, renewal percent, vault auth ref. Did we put it on the correct level? Rollout restart targets. It should be on the same level as destination. So let's just double check under vault auth.yaml. Roll out restart target, kind deploy mint sample app. Okay. Roll out restart targets. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, okay. and reapply? Yep. Okay, let's see. Well, now it's pretty recreated, so that's good. Um, and then hopefully the pod will have restart. The pod itself will have been restarted. So if you check the pods, it should. We didn't delete the pod, but you'll see that it has been re. It's been since it's been rotated, it's been retriggered. Might have to figure out what's going on. Um, but there we are. Yeah, so forced revocation of leasing might not be great, uh, might not be well handled. Um, in terms of the lease expiration, uh, after it gets to two thirds of the lease duration, then it will renew the lease, right? So uh, it will keep renewing the lease uh, until the lease until the lease expires, until it reaches the max TTL. Um, so it could be that we just did a force, we went, because we did a force revocation, it probably didn't automatically pick it up. Um, so maybe next time we just set a shorter TTL. I don't know. <laughs> um, we are coming up. We have five minutes left. So I do want to recap. And there was another secret. Uh, sorry, another question in chat. Does vault static secret can be used also? Or do we have to just only use dynamic secret? You can use static secret for KV. So if you have static secrets in KV, you can use static secrets in KV. Dynamic secrets just handle things a little bit differently in that it's retrieving information um, and handling some of the leases that are coming out of dynamic secrets engines. Um, but you use static secrets for KV, and there's also a PKI um, secrets custom resource. The PKI secrets custom resource is for certificates. We'll cover that in another um, in another stream, but there is the PKI secrets engine, which issues certificates. So if you wanted to issue certificates um, through Vault and you wanted to inject them in Kubernetes, it also will handle, the VSO will also handle that for you as well. Okay, so Michael, how's it feel to now have tried VSO? 
It, yeah, it's it's very good. Um, so I know I mentioned it earlier mm -hmm. um, that I have experience using the agent injector. Um, that's kind of where most of my experience lies. Um, I've heard of the VSO, but this was the very first time that I've used it. And um, yeah, I, I think as you mentioned, there are some applications that are, um, you know, that you can't really change or they might be um, vault. They, they might not be aware of vault or um, they're following the like Kubernetes uh, native um, practices there. So that's where I, I see VSO or vault secrets operator fitting in the most. Yeah, I think that there's um, there is a third one we didn't cover. Um, I don't cover it because I think that folks are, you know, I think most folks have either gravitated toward the Asian injector or VSO. Um, CSI, um, there's a CSI secret store driver for Vault. It works similar to the Vault to Vault agent in that it's using a file mount. Um, and so it's using a sort of like it's got CSI um, custom resources. Uh, that you can define that authenticate to vault and then add the secret into a file somewhere. You can also sync it to a Kubernetes secret as well. So if you are kind of looking for a standard way to do it um, and you have maybe other secrets managers that you're targeting, uh, check out secrets store, uh, CSI secrets store driver. Um, there is a vault CSI provider for that. Uh, and there's other CSI providers, but I haven't had it as, I just haven't heard too many people adopt it um, because it requires host value, host volume access, for example. And um, there are a lot of Kubernetes clusters that restrict that kind of access. So I hear more about Vault Agent and I hear now more recently about VSO. Um, so if people are interested in CSI though, do, do drop it in the chat. Um, we might just break it out into a separate stream or I might just upload a recording separately for it um, since we're coming up on time. Um, and we managed to talk about Kubernetes in one stream. Uh, <laughs> it's an oversimplification of things, but, um, you know, I think that, that, you know, we managed to talk about it in one stream, which is pretty good. Um, I guess, uh, any other things that we should talk about Kubernetes vault related, anything else that you can think of, Michael? Not off the top of my head. No, I, I think, I think we covered yeah. Have bit. you done re like a reload with application? So like if the secret changes, then the application reloads um, on Kubernetes. Like, has that been an issue before? Is that a big concern? Yeah. Um, in my experience, um, I haven't used Vault on Kubernetes um, a, a whole lot. When I, when I do, it's that Vault agent injector, and um, I think in most cases, I. I what you mentioned, there was like a specific endpoint that you can curl and tell the application to refresh its credentials. So yeah. As you mentioned, just because you change your secrets doesn't mean your application knows that um, the secrets have been changed. Yeah. Um, I, it's important, I think, that uh, if you are going through this process and you're saying, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to be handle dynamic secrets and things like that, you will, you may have to re-architect your application. Um, and there's also a, a thought process, like some applications aren't using Vault Agent and they aren't using VSO. Instead, they're using an S, the Vault, uh, like a Vault SDK or something, and they're calling Vault directly by API. And it does work, but you do have to write application logic in that in there in order to handle any um, new secrets or anything that changes, right? You have to add polling, some kind of polling or retry mechanism in your application to handle that. Uh, and it's not always feasible. So, um, you know, that's one thing to do. And there's a suggestion in chat, thank you. Um, some, most people just use Reloader for that. Yeah, so you could also use something like Reloader just to reload. But, uh, you know, there are a lot of options that are available. Um, there, It's not an uncommon pattern as well. So you could go for a, a different tool as well if you need to. Right. And I think the kind of where Kubernetes lives, um, a lot of containers are ephemeral. So when you change secrets, um, very easy to just destroy that container, spin up a new container, which we saw with the um, yeah. rollout restart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so thank you for the suggestion in chat, folks, for Reloader. That is great. So if you do need to refresh your, you know, config map, refresh based on config map for Kubernetes secret, check out that tool. Um, 
Yeah. So I think that's it. Other than that, in terms of next stream, uh, we I thought we might go for two streams on Kubernetes. We aren't, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we somehow fit it into one stream. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. We somehow fit, we managed to fit it in one stream. Um, we're probably going to talk about Transit and uh, PKI Secrets Engine on the next stream. Um, Transit is a little bit different, I think, than I, I guess my, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Transit is a little bit different than some of the other Secrets Engines that you've probably found um or that you've probably checked out um and then the the pki secrets engine is certificates so um you know you're going to find that a lot of these uh are related and have just different data being output but you'll have different use cases for them so we're going to dive into transit and pki next um, other than that this is going to conclude Kubernetes and Vault. Um, we didn't go through all three ways because I felt like maybe it just wasn't necessarily worth showing a third way with a repeat. It's just a different custom resource. Um, but if you have more questions, do let us know. Uh, I dropped in a link to a list of the Kubernetes Vault integrations and a comparison of the three. So if you are trying to decide between the three, there's a whole list of, of there's a nice chart on there that tells you what the differences are and some considerations that you have. Um, with that, thank you, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you.